Hello and welcome everyone to Fox Sports Live. I'm Hunter Smith. And while this is more so an issue of convenience, it does become a matter of student safety at night. How are you going to get your players to really lock in now that they're going to have to filter out some outside noise such as the crowd and the band? We had an exciting weekend of baseball, both college and major league, and we have our top plays of the weekend coming up. Patterson has always said, you give me a veteran secondary, I'm going to cause some problems for people. Sure. And they did it against Mason Rudolph, and I think they're going to do it again this week. The storyline of this season has been TCU has not been able to put together a complete game. Rams got off to their first 7-0 start since 1985. That, of course, was your third year in the NFL. I think the plus of actually coming off of a bye is you don't have all that hype of TCU jumping into the top 10. We moved That's up true. a spot, true. and we didn't even That's do true. Anything. We did move up a spot. Thank you, Washington State, um, <laughs> for knocking off USC. Thanks, Chuck. TCU getting the bats going early in this one, scoring seven runs within the first four innings. Hey, everyone. I'm Hunter Smith for Fan Media. TCU taking on SMU this weekend in the battle for the Iron Skillet. Now, this is a textbook definition of a trap game because TCU is clearly the more talented team, but is also taking on Oklahoma State next weekend in Stillwater. SMU only has only one real threat on offense, and that's wide receiver Cortland Sutton. If TCU can shut him down, then they shut down the entire Mustang offense. I think TCU will keep him double covered with a corner and then safety over top. For TCU's offense, I think they continue to run the ball and control the clock. Kenny Hill is completing 72% of his passes so far this season, and I think a large part of that is the new emphasis on the run game. Now, SMU is going to come out with all the tricks in the book. They have everything to gain, nothing to lose in this game, but I think when the dust settles, the Horn Frogs is going to be hoisting the iron skillet once again, and a 49-17 win. He's become a household name at TCU, but before arriving to Fort Worth, this linebacker wasn't always going after quarterbacks. Ty Summers was playing quarterback. Uh, Rice was the first school to offer me, and they told me if I had a good year, oh, they would end up letting me have the chance to play quarterback. But other than that, schools like, you know, Ivy League schools. For Summers, the goal wasn't so much to play quarterback, but the chance to compete at a high level. Okay, I'll play nose tackle. If I got to, to play at a Big 12, you know, SEC, whatever the t Power 5 level that we have, you know, we compete against here at TCU, like, I'd be willing to play anything. While Summers had little experience at linebacker, he felt his style of play gave him a starting point for the transition. It was difficult, but if you ask anyone that watched me play quarterback, like I wasn't just a typical quarterback. Like I played physical, and so I started off just bringing that physical nature. Um, that's all I really had to start with. TCU football head coach Gary Patterson has often taken athletes who've played quarterback and moved them to different positions. One of the reasons I've always liked quarterbacks and running backs because that's usually where uh, people <clears throat> coaches put their best players because it's going to touch the ball the most. How to make guys miss when I'm running the ball, how to read defensive ends and linebackers when I'm handing it or keeping it, things of that nature. That has, that's always kind of in my mind when I'm out there playing linebackers. I kind of have an idea what like certain tendencies quarterbacks have just because I did it myself. At quarterback, Summer says he had to know all the responsibilities of everyone on offense and says it's more of the same on the defensive side. So I've got to know what the defensive line do, is doing for it to be able to play the run, to know which gap I'm responsible for. And then when it comes to pass, I need to know exactly what the safeties and corners are doing. That way I know what my pass responsibility is. Pretty much the same thing, just on the opposite side of the ball. Leadership and communication are two key skills Summers developed while under center. So that being said, like I'm always having to make sure I'm reach, turning around to the safety, communicating with them, and then also communicating to the defensive line, giving them the strength call, which way we're slanting, things of that nature. So. I feel like as the linebacker, I'm also out there having to communicate to the whole defense as well as like the quarterback when I had to communicate to the entire offense. Hunter Smith, TCU Sports Now. The Harrison parking lot right behind me will be closed off in May after graduation as construction for a new performing arts center takes its place. Now this will cause students in the fall to have to park farther away from campus. And while this is more so an issue of convenience, it does become a matter of student safety at night. I mean, I like walking, too, but, you know, sometimes I get a little nervous when it's at night. Currently, most students park at or near the Harrison lot for either night class or a late night study session at the library. I usually come to the library more towards the night, and I usually park in this first lot right behind the library. However, with the upcoming changes in parking happening in the fall, students may have to be more cautious when coming to and from the east side of campus. I always want to have, like, those... Um, emergency poles with the blue lights at least somewhere near me in case something, God forbid, does happen. Deanne Jones of TCU Police says they will be taking steps to adjust to the upcoming parking changes. If any changes happen on campus, we always have our officers patrol 
to look to see if there's any vulnerabilities anywhere. One of those patrols includes annual light walks, making sure areas around campus are well lit. Jones also says the university is planning to add an additional shuttle to help with the new lot along Merida Avenue, which will be completed in mid-March. Well, right now there's only one on that route, so we will increase at least to two. I think they are a good resource, but sometimes you have to wait 10, 15 minutes. But they're not always um, right there or convenient or going fast or things like that. Now Jones says for the students that do have to walk to their cars at night, should go in groups if possible, be mindful of their surroundings, and always contact campus police if they are ever in a situation that makes them feel unsafe. For TCU News Now, I'm Hunter Smith. And a big moment here in the fourth, more at the line, misses the free throw, but hustles in for the loose ball, ultimately saving the possession that would lead to this play right here. Holiday to Moore, out to Rondo for the baseline three, and that would be the dagger. The Panthers jumped out to an early 16-0 lead, but the Lions would fight back with this long touchdown pass from Grant Satcher to Nick Patterson. Earlier this month, Horn Frogs were excited to be back in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1998. But men's basketball suffered an early exit with a 57-52 loss to Syracuse on Friday. Head coach Jamie Dixon says, I think for us, the positive is what we've done. We haven't been to the tournament in 20 years, as people have reminded us as I spoke about our seniors. They came to a place that hadn't been there, so it's a special thing to break a 20-year drought. For now, Dixon says he is focusing on recruiting for the next season. I'm Hunter Smith for Fox Live, and that's all we have for you.